I want to welcome everybody to His Glory Ministry as we continue our series in the book of Revelation. Tonight we will be in Revelation 8. Um, as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down and be our teacher in this important study. Remember, uh, in our first beginning of Revelation, this is the only book of the Bible that Christ has and God the Father and the Holy Spirit said, uh, read me, I'm special. There's many blessings to understand the prophecies of, of the book of Revelation because God, through his Son, Jesus Christ, wants us to be aware of the times that we're in. We, we're learning that through the, our studies in the book of Matthew. We are, we, we are called upon to know the times and the seasons. And you can see by the world we're in today, the, the world is literally melting down. All we have to do is watch the news. We've never had uh, chaos and wars like we've, we've got today. I mean, literally the world is melting down uh, on every place. Morality is gone, and the church needs to step up in these latter days to bring the message of Jesus Christ out in this time of horrific terror, in this time of judgment that our Lord and Savior is coming back. So it's up to us, brothers and sisters, to understand God's word and fulfill whatever will he has for our lives in these, short, in these short days and to get every single person to come into the fold, every lost soul that we can bring in before the Lord says to our mighty Christ, go get him and the time will be over because uh, and, and when that time comes, it may be too late for some people. So let's make sure that uh, we are seeking God's face in this word and in prayer and doing everything we possibly can uh, to match God's will for our lives and these end times to make sure that we are aware of the times and the seasons. And if you follow end time prophecy, which is the theologians call eschatology, which is just a fancy word of saying end time prophecy, it is being fulfilled literally before our own eyes. We see Psalm 83 war literally being formed um, around Israel as we speak with Hezbollah and Hamas and Gaza and the West Bank. We see the makings of the Ezekiel War, 38 and 39, with Gog and Magog uh, helping Persia uh, as we speak. So the, the, the testimonies from Ezekiel, the testimonies from the prophets, the prophecies that were given to these prophets thousands of years ago by the Lord Almighty are coming to fruition. And we're going to do a series uh, upcoming in the word of his glory on uh, the accuracy of the Bible, how precise the Bible is, and how we know the Bible is truth, and how we can prove without a shadow of a doubt that the Bible is from outside of time domain, and it was God-breathed, as the scripture says, 2 Timothy 3.16. The scripture was God-breathed, and it is God-breathed. This is his living blueprint for us, and it's our responsibility, as the scripture says in the book of Revelation, to understand, and we will be blessed of these end-time prophecies as they uh, as they. Uh, unfold before our very eyes. With that said, and with the Holy Spirit uh, upon us, and we pray into the scripture as it says that uh, when two or three are gathered in Christ's name, Christ's presence will be with us. And throughout this broadcast, it's literally going to uh, hundreds of nations around the globe. We have the presence of Jesus Christ himself with us in this presentation. So let's get into Revelation 8. When he opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven for a half an hour. Okay, so this is really important here. Um, bef uh, when he opened the seventh seal, the seventh is meaning completion again. Seven is throughout the entire Revelation because the book of Revelation is about completion. Completion of God's testing and will on earth and the elimination of sin once and for all through the evil one and his demonic uh, buddies. And those who have accepted Jesus Christ uh, and, and salvation will have the millennial reign with him uh, and then eternity with uh, the three, God the Father, uh, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit living in perfection. So everything pauses. You can imagine this as a movie. Uh, the drama is, is, and the music is, is, is just coming to a screech, and it's that silent before the storm, that eerie silent, everything's quiet for 30 minutes uh, before God starts to open up his judgments. 
Revelation 8, 2, I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Again, the seven angels representing seven completions, seven messages with seven trumpets. The trumpet will issue in the, the, the call from the Lord. Revelation 8, 3, Then another angel, having a golden censer, came up and stood at the altar, and he was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And Revelation 8, 4, And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Um, so here we are, the, again, the, the altar is filled with incense, and the incense is, is still, again, is a, is a symbol of our prayers. The prayers are going into these censer bowls, and once these censer bowls be, are full, the, the presence of our, our, our prayers uh, through our high place, Jesus Christ, go up to God the Father, and that's what this is representing. Uh, re the angel uh, with the prayers of the saints and the smoke, the smoke being the incense. It's a it's a it's a wonderful aroma to the Lord because He sees our hearts and how much we 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 love Him and in our intercessory prayer and our prayer of 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 forgiveness and our prayer of worthiness and glory and praise to the most. Hi, God. He loves prayer. And this is why it's so important for us to get stronger in our prayer life and to be able to speak to God. He wants to have an intimacy with us. He wants to have, uh, uh, he wants to see our heart. And our heart needs to be on fire and in love for the Most High God because that's how much He loves us. And you can see it by how much He puts into the censor bowls and the prayers, how important they are. Revelation 8, 5. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it into the earth. And there was noises, thunders, lightnings, and earthquakes. So he's taken the prayers. It's got it up to his presentation. It's got it into his, his nostrils. And then he throws it down because this is the vengeance. The prayers of the saints now come to his attention, and it's time for him to act. And the Lord is saying to the Son, it's time, my son, to go and be the kinsman redeemer, the Goel, the blood redeemer, and redeem my land, my land, my holy land, the only land which belongs to God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of, the God of Israel, our God, Yeshua, Yahweh. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Revelation 8, 7, the first angel sounded, and hail and fire fouled and mingled with blood. They were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and the green grass was burned up. So hail and fire were, were thrown out. Remember, this, the, the last judgment is the fire judgment. The first judgment on the earth is when God flooded the earth and gave the rainbow as a, as a covenant to Noah that he would never flood the earth again. Um, but the second one is going to be a fire. This is the fire judgment. This is uh, coming down with fire and hail, with blood. Uh, blood being the redeeming um, of, of vengeance. And uh, a third, it says a third of the trees were burned up and the grass was burned up. So this was, did, did tremendous damage when this came down. And the hail, we know later on in the book of Revelation, this is not your normal hailstorm. This is not, you know... Uh, dime-sized hail hitting, hitting in a storm. We see that in the scripture right later on and uh, th th they're up to 75 pound balls or stones of hail. And again, the stone representing judgment, the stone representing um, um, uh, stoning is, was, was the capital punishment in, in, in the law. And this is the stoning coming. It's a similar to the stoning that we saw in, in the book of Joshua, where uh, the Lord sent hail to save the Israelites um, from the evil kings. And the same thing, God's judgment is coming down in hail, which is more than hail, which is big boulders of 75-pound hail. Revelation 8.8, 8. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and the, the third of the sea became blood. Okay, so I believe this is a literal, actual thing that happens. 
and there's a symbolism to this as well. Some scholars will tell you it's a symbol. Some will tell you it's literal. I believe it's both. God is always very, very deep in his teaching. Uh, remember, the mountain always represents government. So I really believe that this was an actual, that you'll see the mountains burning, uh, whether they be through um, vo volcano eruptions or the, the, the hail and the fire that God is, is throwing upon the earth, which starts earthquakes, which starts um, uh, just volcanic eruptions where mountains are literally catching on fire and sliding into the sea. And also the mountain represents, re represents government. So you're seeing the worldly government burning and on fire and being uh, captured by God once and for all and melting into the sea. And again, the sea is a, um, is a reference of evil. Uh, and so the, 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 the sea is taking up its dead. And the sea is literally filled with blood, as the scripture says. And that's the, the blood of the, the, that the kinsman redeemer is coming back to judge. And the sea is showing that the mountains, the government, is, is flowing into the evilness of the sea. And it's swallowing it up. And it all became, a third of it became blood. So that's God's judgment on sin. God's judgment, judgment on the, uh, the world governments. And that's literally seeing mountains uh, on fire through volcanic eruptions, through earthquakes which fall into the sea, create tsunamis. So we're seeing all kinds of, uh, of disasters that are natural, um, but supernatural from God that has spurred this, this judgment coming on from the second angel. Revelation 8, 9, And the third of the living creatures in the sea died, and the third of the ships were destroyed. So this is being literal. A third of the ships were destroyed, and the third of the living creatures in the sea died. And we notice when we get to the, the everlasting life, uh, eternity with Jesus Christ, there will be not a sea any longer. There will be not a, a need for a sea. And we'll see that later in Revelation. So the sea is representing evil and is giving up its dead. Uh, Revelation 8.10, Then the third angel sounded, a great star fell from heaven burning like a torch, and fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of the water. And the name of the star was Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was bitter. So this star that was thrown, um, this great star uh, was thrown, thrown from heaven is no other than Satan. Remember Satan, and we, we know more in, uh, about Satan in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, that he was the great cherub, probably the first creation of Jesus Christ. The great cherub, um, wonderful in music, uh, just the, the highest ranking angel as you could be, but because of pride and wanted to be higher than the most high God, was thrown out and given domain over the first and second heaven. However, we know through the book of Job and other places in Scripture that he is the great prosecutor. He has access to the throne today. And Jesus Christ being our, our high priest is our, is our defense attorney before, before God the Father and making intercession for the evil one coming to throw uh, uh, blasphemies against each and every one of us to, 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 to damn us, if you will. So this is Satan be, being thrown out of the literal heaven, not to have access to God's throne anymore. And we can pick this up in Isaiah 14, 12. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You will once lay low the nations. Again, showing that he had control of the first and second heaven under God. That's why, that's why Satan tested Christ in the, in, in, the, uh, in the Gospels. Because he had control. He had authority. You cannot be tested unless you do have the authority. So Christ was tested because uh, Satan had authority. And Christ stood still and, and over came because of what he knew he had to do for the blood redemption and he had to take the hard road uh, satan was hoping he would take the easy road and just give up give it up and have power without having the pain just getting something for nothing but christ loved this so much that he rebuked the devil and he, he stayed to take on the punishment and die on the cross for eternal life knowing that through his blood will be eternal life and he will be our king of kings and lord of hosts and he'll reign from the new Jerusalem forever and ever and ever. So also talking about the, the star that's wormwood and, and the many men that died of the waters, 
um, being bitter. That, that, that's also given reference to Jeremiah 9, 15. Therefore it is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, See, I will make this people eat bitter food and drink poisonous water. Again, in Jeremiah 23, 15, the, the prophet Jeremiah says it again from the Lord. I will make them uh, eat be bitter food and drink poison water. From the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has spread throughout the land. So the ungodliness has spread throughout the land, and now it's time for God the God, the Father, to, to, to create uh, eternal judgment and, and bring, and bring uh, goodness and, 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 and justice into the world through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, who will be coming back on a white horse as our kinsman redeemer. Then the fourth angel sounded, we were in Revelation 8, 12, and the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, and that the third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. So again, I believe this is a literal thing that happened through the fourth angel sounded, that literally a third of all those things were, uh, were darkened because of the, of the judgment on the world. Also, there is symbolism here. Again, the sun and the moon and the stars always represent authority and having authority. Remember back in Genesis when, when, when Joseph had the dream and Jacob uh, rebuked Joseph but kept it in mind is what the scripture said, that he saw the sun, moon, and stars that would have to bow down to him. Well, the sun uh, and the moon represented Jacob and his mother, and the stars the 11 stars represented his 11 brothers that would literally have to bow down to Joseph because Joseph did indeed become, fulfilling that dream, second in command of all of Egypt. And you know the story when they were brought into um, uh, Pharaoh's land into Goshen, uh, Joseph rescued them, and they, they literally bowed down to, their, to, to Joseph. So this is representing authority. So the authority of the world government is being split by a third through these judgments of the Most High God. And Revelation 8, 13, and we wrap the uh, Revelation 8 up for the night. And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blast, the trumpets of the three angels who are about to sound. So this angel is heard flying with three woes. And again, that's the woe of the Father, the woe of the Son, and the woe of the Holy Spirit as the inhabitants of the earth of judgments coming. And that's why we want to make sure every single person that is alive today knows Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior because we wish it upon no one to have to go through this tribulation. Even if you're a tribulation saint, you don't want to go through these judgments. This is going to be uh, the worst of times. And we pray that salvation comes to each and every one of our brothers and sisters so that they, A, have eternal life with the Most High God, and B, that they'll be able to, uh, if they emulate the, the, the way of the church of Philadelphia, meaning anxiously await his return and be joyful and, and, and follow the way of the Lord and stay strong, stay strong in his name and stay strong in his word and do not cave into the world, they will be able to escape the time of great tribulation is what the scripture says in the church of Philadelphia as we learned earlier. So that wraps up Revelation 8. And uh, thank you, brothers and sisters. I, I pray that this has been a blessing to each and every one of you. And I just want to say right now, if there's anybody on this broadcast throughout the world that has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's no other time better than now. Because I wish nothing for anybody to have to go through these three woes that are about to come. Because it's going to get worse as we get into Revelation 9. And we see the times around us. We see these events are happening. You can literally take what's happening on television, what's happening on the world, what's happening on the internet, and literally match it up to Scripture. We mentioned Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38 and 39, many other Ezekiel prophecies and Isaiah. The scripture is following the word of God exactly the way God said it would through his prophets. So for those who have not accepted Jesus Christ, I ask you to pray this simple prayer. Dear Jesus, I love you and I have sinned and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that through the scriptures are truth and that you died for me and on the third day rose to sit at the right hand of the Father and you will be coming back real soon to, to bring in eternal life and bring in the millennial reign of, of Jesus Christ and the millennial reign to, to complete the Davidic covenant. I accept you 
as my Lord and Savior, and I'll walk in your path, and I repent of my sins. If you prayed that prayer with me, brothers and sisters, you have eternal life. And may God bless each and every one of you. Until next time, God bless.